Today, we'll be talking about chemiosmosis. Let's begin. First, we'll cover the who, what, when, where, and why. We'll call the who chemiosmosis, even though it's not actually being. That's ATP synthase harnessing the power of protons passing through it to synthesize ATP to drive cellular work. Now, when exactly does it occur? Chemiosmosis is the second step in oxidative phosphorylation. That's part of respiration. It can happen anywhere with ATP synthase embedded in a double membrane. Now the whole purpose is to synthesize ATP to drive cellular work. Let's go over the process. All these little phospholipids make up a double membrane. We also need more H plus hydrogen protons on one side than the other. These usually get here via the electron transport chain. It's actually a complex of four different proteins, but we'll save that for another video. Next, we add the most important part of all, a protein complex called ATP synthase. ATP synthase is a complex of proteins embedded in a membrane. It's used for chemiosmosis. It can be found in the membranes of mitochondria and chloroplasts and also in the membrane of prokaryotes. Remember how prokaryotes don't have any membranous or membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria, chloroplasts, nuclei, the ER, or the Golgi? Well, the mitochondrion has not one, but two membranes. In fact, there's a theory out there that says that mitochondria and chloroplasts formerly were their own prokaryotes. This endosymbiont theory states that these prokaryotes had ATP synthase embedded in their membranes that helped them synthesize ATP. When they were engulfed by a eukaryotic cell, this eukaryote could use their ATP synthesizing or photosynthesizing abilities to its own advantage. This gives the eukaryotes more energy to use for more complex actions that they do today. This theory also explains why today's prokaryotes have ATP synthase in their membranes. Let's get back to chemiosmosis. We now have our double membrane, protons on one side, and ATP synthase. Here are some of the labels on ATP synthase. The stator, half channels, the rotor, the internal rod, and the catalytic knob. I'll use this greenish color to trace the proton path. First, protons follow the concentration gradient and flow into the stator. The stator anchors the whole thing into the membrane. Once the rotor starts spinning, they'll need the stator to keep it in place. The protons travel into the rotor, where they spin around, and eventually they exit through one of the half channels. Think of these channels as the stairs to get on and off of a ferris wheel. You walk up, go around the wheel, and walk off a different set of stairs. This is just like how the proton enters a small channel in the stator, goes around the rotor, then exits the other small channel into the inner mitochondrial matrix or the cytoplasm. The rotor is attached to the internal rod, so when it spins, it also spins. The internal rod is attached to the catalytic knob, so that's spun when the internal rod spins. Inside the catalytic knob, ADP and phosphate are bonded. ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, is just like ATP, except it only has two phosphates. Di means two. ADP and phosphate approach the catalytic knob. Here, they spin around and exit as ATP after being bonded. And there we have our end product. 
all done. ATP synthase is usually adjacent to an electron transport chain. Protons are expelled into the extracellular or intermembrane space by protein complexes in the electron transport chain. This provides the proton motive force, or the concentration gradient, that moves protons into the ATP synthase without using up ATP. That would be counterproductive if it used up ATP as it synthesized it. That's why this is passive transport, which uses no ATP since it follows the concentration gradient. Now, let's recap. Chemiosmosis. It's the process by which protons follow the concentration gradient to enter ATP synthase, where they activate the bonding of a phosphate and ADP, thus synthesizing ATP. It can occur in the mitochondrial membrane or in prokaryotes. They have ATP synthase embedded in their plasma membranes. Chemiosmosis can occur when a proton following the concentration gradient enters the rotor of ATP synthase through a small channel. This turns the rotor also spinning the catalytic knob which which binds ADP and phosphate to form ATP. That's all for today, folks. Hopefully that was helpful to you, and I'll have some new videos up in a bit. Bye!